Can you comment on uh, Tyson, Mike Tyson? Oh, so, yeah, that thing. <laughs> so first, so he, uh, there's two things I want to, so he's mm -hmm. a, in terms of fear, there's a clip there, I think from a documentary where he mm -hmm. talks about he is like fully afraid as he walks up to the ring and as he gets closer and closer and closer, he gets more confident until he gets in and then he's a god or something like that. Mm -hmm. That coupled with his statement on Joe Rogan, that he gets aroused uh, at the possibility of true, like of hurting somebody in mm -hmm. the ring. So like he gets aroused at the violence. Yeah. Uh, so I like it because it's coupled to your basically statement that we need to own, to find our own unique way of existing at our top level of performance. And that perhaps is Mike Tyson. But do you think there's something more deeply universal to the the Mike Tyson speaking to the fact that he's aroused at the possibility of yeah, violence? Yeah, I do actually. Uh, although I don't think that it always equates to arousal <laughs> for people. In fact, I would say in general, it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, I can say I've never had a boner in the ring. In <laughs> fact, if anything, you know, old combat cock is like, we're not hanging around. We're yeah. leaving. We're going up. Yeah. We're taking off. Yeah. Like, we don't want anything to do with this. Yes. You have fun. Come back yeah. to us when you yeah. have something uh, warmer, softer, smells better. Yeah. But um, the power, the feeling of aliveness. Yeah. I could see it. It being, you know, back to the, even the concept of the Ubermensch. I feel like the states, the highest states of being I've ever been in were in the midst of conflict. I felt like that was the times, those are the, those are the moments in my life where I felt like I was at the highest level of, of being as a human in existence. But yet, even being in that state was not, it was not something that you could interact with people that weren't in that state with you. Like they wouldn't get it. You would almost seem, and to be that way all the time, either A, might drive you mad, or B, is you're not, you're something that's untenable to the rest of society. Like you can't function with everybody else. It will not work. It's just like you said with the Ubermensch, it's like it's perhaps that ideal is not something you can hold for long. That's the, the very nature of it is. Yeah, well, there was an example in The Spoke Zarathustra about a snake being down the person's throat and biting it and then having this maniacal laughter erupting. And, you know, to me it was, uh, at least I read it as, yeah, okay, there's this insane moment that isn't forever, but that it is life and death and it is and and the overcoming it is the thing that all of a sudden gives you that tapping into the, the your your highest state, right? This is, you know, man is uh, a chasm, uh, a tightrope between uh man and ubermensch. Well, I I don't want to leave your thought about uh, we'll, we'll, just, we'll, we'll call those things flourishes to, to the aspect of, uh, Tyson's, uh, interpretation or, or his, his, his expression of his feelings in combat. And so I gave this antidote to the guy and I just, you know, at my first anecdote, uh, to that athlete I was working with. And I said, you know, this isn't, there isn't a superior way in this sense. Yes. There is the way that works for you. That may be something you can implement to other people if you find that person, because we all have different personalities. And, and to me, that's a, that, that is, that's an absolute, I, I don't want to, nobody don't come at me with all your other fucking social sciences crap. No, we have distinct personalities that, that personality, that, that who you really are. And this, you know, again, Heidegger, Dasein, like being authentic. If you're, if you're authentic with who you are, goods and bads, you will know how to create what that is. And for me, violence and fighting and conflict was something that always felt normal to me. And I don't mean normal in like I grew up in a war zone or a, a, a abusive household or something like that. I just meant that you know, I was a kid who was very joyful and inquisitive um, and spent a lot of time around older people of all things. Uh, and also, while I don't think I have much capability towards engineering. My mom said that one of the first things as like a little baby, she, when she put me in my sister's old crib, instead of my sister who just milled about and was fine with it all, the first thing I did was I completely deconstructed it. I didn't break it, I, I figured out how to pull it apart. Curiosity about the world, and yet that wasn't in conflict with the idea of violence? No, not at all. And so being a very joyful and nice kid, but you know, kids are kids and and if if, kids can find that you respond maybe more easily to agitation, they will agitate you. 
And if you should stand out in some way by being taller or bigger or something, or caring, mm -hmm. especially, they will agitate you. They don't That's really fully understand it either. And so I don't, I don't hold anything against like any of the kids that used to pick on me or whatever, especially at the youngest ages, like, man, they don't know shit either. So, um, but once that line was pushed for me, it was, oh, well, I was, I was being cool. Now you're being uncool. Yeah. Well, then that gives me license for everything. Yeah. And so boom, we would just go at it or kids that would try to initiate a fight and I'm like, okay. And being in that moment of just going going to town with someone else, it just felt like this is this, I, be I I belong here. Yeah, too. it was it was never a problem for me. Like the in fact, if anything, the over what I had to understand was well, not only did I, I learn the hard way that it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter what anybody else does if your response and violence even to their violence, if you're the winner, is often going to be penalized severely. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, society, state apparatus, they don't want any of that. They want to be the only arbiter of violence in the world always. But I learned a very difficult lesson with that, and it was really impactful in a negative way on me. But also, I had to learn on an individual sense to, you need to manage violence too, because Hey, if someone attacks you or starts a fight with you and you go at it, okay, beating them up is one thing, you know, um, you know, trying to grab a handful of broken glass from the street and throw it in their face. Maybe that's a bit much at seven. So you need to learn what, what level is necessary and you need to learn what comes with, with all, what's the responsibility of, of when you enact violence. I mean, you take on something when you, you have a responsibility for that. This is a the extension of your actions. Um, so, uh, but as I got older and especially as I found sports and then combat sports, now this was a place for me to flourish and, to the point where I was more myself in that space than I was outside of it until time enough where I could learn to, to get this back together again. And I never say that I, that I'll merge the two or anything like that. No, all what happened, my, my, um, uh, um, uh, my journey, uh, from adolescence on to, uh, to manhood, a huge portion of it besides the normal finding yourself, whatever, whatever. Right. Actually, what it was, it was re getting back to who I always was. Getting that back to- That curious kid, the kind kid. Getting back to the guy that I should have been allowed to become instead of what happened under the pressures of, of other things. Yeah, yeah. and uh, the attempt for society and and certain people within you know a managerial positions to to compress what that was into something that they found more suitable.